Ever since mass media came into existence, its creators have always faced the problem of hero and heroism. How should a hero that a big mass of people can relate to look like? Will he be believable if he mostly acts just like you? Or like your best friend? Or he must be somehow different? How to make an enjoyable heroic journey? And how to make it feel really epic? Well, we have just the game to sort all those things out. Its name is Septera Core and it is a semi-turn based GRPG where high technology, magic and ancient prophecies came together aiming to give a player a rich experience of a grand adventure in a company of honorable heroes. The action takes place on a bizarre planet Subterra, which consists of seven shells, one above the other, orbiting around the planet's core and connected by some kind of spine. At the first place, game introduces Maya, the main protagonist, and her home shell too, which is a pretty wicked post-apocalyptic desert covered with junk. By accident, she meets Duskis, the man responsible for the devastation of her homeland, who plans to wage wars on the other shells, driven by an addiction of inheriting an unknown gift that was left by Subterra's creator. Maya gathers the party and rushes into the adventure over all seven shells and the core after the villain. Let's look at our heroes. If we would apply Dungeons and Dragons alignment system to the party, all the characters would fit into good sector. Maya and Corgan would be lawful good, Grub, Led, Aram and Lobo chaotic good, and Selina and I suppose Badu neutral good. Runner is beyond moral categories. Most of the party is highly moral, acts compassionately towards the poor and weak, but shows no mercy to the oppressors. They don't make fun of each other and treat one another with respect, and if not, a player can fix that by completing special reconciliation tasks. They are dedicated to their goals, mostly serious, almost never indulge in entertainment or discuss sexually related topics. By Marduk, no one with honor would act in this way. So they are truly a company of exemplary heroes and that affects the feeling of the game in a huge way. The more honorable a hero's personality is, the more transparent it becomes. And having nothing to analyze in it, a player shifts his attention from the hero itself to the realm surrounding the hero. And the world of Septera has something to show. Each of Subterra's shells has its own distinct atmosphere and design. Maya's crew will travel through the Steampunky Shell 2, Woody Shell 3, Low Life Cyberpunky Shell 4, Shell 7 infested by glowing mushrooms, and so forth. The game is generous in terms of places to explore. For example, Slums District on Shell 4, with its inhabited hovels, exists only for the player to collect some equipment and consumables. But compared to another very generous game, Planescape Torment, where almost every piece of the environment is yours to interact, Subterra's world stays almost intact. This makes Maya's party feel minor and helpless against enormous rotating masses of the shells, while Nameless One quickly takes control over the situation. That works very well for the epicness of the game, it gives a player this man against the wild feel. The goals of Maya's team are merely impossible, the options are few, but it still fights against the whole world. Besides being huge, Subterra's world is filled with mysteries. There are ancient wounds imprinted on a sewer hatch among the slums and brothels. A kid's spirit that will run away if you approach it from the wrong side. Ancient but high-tech factory with doors sealed shut. Motley birds all over the shells and a strange locked tower where those birds gather and many more. And of course, you'll be the one to solve those. Besides that, the player will fulfill several ancient prophecies and reconstruct artifacts that were originally used to create the world. Now how epic is that? But this isn't the main idea of Septera Core, to give a player several unique elaborate worlds to explore. Most of the game you will be fighting, and all those various places will become your battleground. And now we're getting to the core of Septera Core, the combats. Combats are the language the game speaks. 
let's take a closer look at the battle system. Most of Maya's team members fight differently. Lead is much faster than Badu, but much weaker. Grub is extremely effective against robots. Arim and runners attacks hit enemies in a straight line. Selena is the best sorceress. Maya and Lobo can strike foes standing close to each other. But most of them can still be grouped into pairs. Maya and Lobo are gunners, grub and lead mechanics, Corgan and Selena swordsmen and so on. Most of the team can be of much use during the game. Each hero has an action scale split into three bars that fills in time and can use a plain attack or mana based ability or spell card. Attacks and abilities require a predefined number of bars to be filled. For each character there are three standard attacks for one, two and three bars filled. More bars, more damage. Spells can be used with any number of bars, but still, the more bars you'll spend, the more powerful they'll be. Also, all three heroes can use different spell cards simultaneously, producing more complex and powerful wizardry. Each time the scale will be zeroed out no matter what action you will perform. All enemies act in a similar way. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? What is interesting about the battle system is how it develops in time. You start with one character and standard attacks. In less than an hour you get a full combat party of three heroes, few mana consuming abilities and one fate card. But your mana supply is still too small and every mana based action will suck it dry while replenishing items and money are few. For quite some time you'll mostly experiment with standard attacks. To beat that guy I need two bars of Maya and one of Runner. And that is perfectly fine to shoot at with three Erin bars. And so on. Later you'll find that your mana reservoir had grown and you're rich enough to supply some mana replenish items. Then you can start to use abilities in most of the encounters, which will diversify and speed them up. Also, you'll notice that you have some fate cards, which combined can do a lot of damage to some bosses. And launch epic spell cutscenes that can't be skipped. Much later in the game you'll get fate cards that will help you to finish most of the regular combats really fast. Also, you'll have money to buy plenty of expensive healing items and heal numerous strong undead enemies to death. At that time, your gun and sword battles will transform into economical ones, where you will make decisions according to waste of health and core replenish items per battle. The player goes through large periods of different battle styles that replace one another like arcs in Berserk manga. That massive alteration is a distinctive feature of an epic journey. Circumstances change but the hero keeps on fighting the evil. Another huge change in the game comes when the team gains its own flying ship that can travel between shells. It adds a strong flavor of freedom to later game process. Now about the economical aspect. Most of the encounters themselves are not a threat. But in Subterra Core you will almost never face single encounters. During the game the player will move from one town with supplies to another through big rows of battles and these can cause problems. Each combat is aimed to drain some of your consumable item supply and as a result some money to restore it in the town later on. If you neglect preparations and don't buy enough health and mana replenish items or act recklessly in a series of fights, you'll probably find yourself stuck in the middle of a battle row that can cost you several hours of gameplay since you'll need to load a save game and supply yourself properly. We can derive a rule out of it. True hero prepares before a big action. Unreasonable combats with a lot of wasted resources can spoil not only the whole battle row but also a pretty big part of the game after it because then you won't have money to buy both needed consumables and equipment and poor armor with guns dealing small damage lead to more frequent item consumption. This fact makes player develop tactics not only for the current battles but for the whole battle rows 
it also stimulates a special kind of mindset which involves thinking in large intervals of time and time dimension is extremely important in a grand adventure. A goal of heroic games like this is to make the player feel tensed most of the time. Partially it works this way, but sometimes the game loses its balance, the combats become too easy even without the waste of resources, and equipment in the shops become too cheap. But the balance order corrects itself, at some points making the player feel weak and poor again. And how can adventure be epic without frequent intense boss fights? There are plenty of these in Septera Core. They look cool, differ one from another, and some of them are really tough. Also, until the last stages of the game, the boss fights will be the main source for the player's income. But even the regular battles look solemnly on Subterra's shells. All these combat preparations, flashy animations and orchestral music really fit in the overall atmosphere. The number of battles in the game is overwhelming. It feels like the player pushes the plot forward through these endless combats, rather than the story flows by itself. When you finish one more extremely long battle row and see another cutscene, you totally feel like you're the one who made that happen. That is also a point for a good heroic game. You need to really strive to achieve something. Speaking of achievements, Subterra Core is unlike most of the story-driven games in terms of mid-range goals. Its plot doesn't consist of sequence of small wins towards the global victory. Despite all your efforts, most of your actions will lead to massive failures, involving the deaths of a whole nations and spoiling planetary forces of Subterra. And the scope of events in the game is huge! Shells bash one into another, and old new races reveal themselves, wars are fought with mythical weapons from legends. This makes a heroic adventure feel as it should. A big deal with big failures and a massive success in the end. At this moment you may think that I consider Septera Core an ideal game and recommend it for everyone to play, but it's not like that. The game is extremely flawed in some aspects of game design. The amount of battles here is so big that it probably should be divided by two. And at the moments the game loses its balance, they become completely boring. Subterra Core shamelessly wastes players' time. Its unoptimized animations make you stare at idle characters for several seconds every combat, and these seconds sums up in hours during the whole game. The spell animations could be much shorter too, or at least skippable. The music in the game is epic and kind of does its job, but 50% of it is too repetitive and not interesting to listen to. The plot is massive and unpredictable, but it's often presented with poor unconvincing dialogues and it goes too slow, requiring a player to wipe out of enemies one huge location after another. These locations are often made with the same principle. The player must collect a handful of colored keys, each one on its big separate map and then open next locations or location with a boss using them. Sometimes it feels like the game developers were inspired by first two Doom games, but in some wicked way. But it is still a decent game, and a really good example to illustrate the principles behind the heroic action. Let's sum up the ideas. Of course, there are other approaches for creating heroic adventure games, but this time we stick to the one used by Septera Core. To be an epic heroic adventure, the game should have at least one honorable hero, but for the big plot scales a company of heroes would do better. One honorable hero fighting enormous evil hordes somehow looks funny. A lot of fighting, much more than in average game. Combats should keep the player tensed most of the time. Preparations should really matter. Player's tactics in combat roles should noticeably influence his wealth in the game. Radical alterations in terms of gameplay, plot or other elements. The heroes interacting with world's history by recreating valuable artifacts of the old, fulfilling prophecies, solving ancient riddles and so on. The dramatic storyline with massive scope that includes big wins and big failures. A huge, diverse and fascinating world. Plenty of cool boss fights and epic animations and music to improve the effect of all above.
So this is it. I would say that the magic spell of the game is a gorgeous but corrupted world being infested by noble heroes that almost gnaw their ways like ants to set things right. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more game magic. See you next time.